Thank you for joining us today at Miniature Wargaming Labs. In this episode, we're going to put together one of the flayed ones from our Pariah Nexus box. You can see it's going to be that one right there. Now, if you don't watch this whole video, just remember this simple advice. Take your time gluing this together. Use plastic glue so that you can move them around after you're done. But once you do, like, the arms and the torso and the chest. Wait for the plastic glue to harden before you take on the legs and affix them to the base. And go ahead, watch the rest of the video where you can see the mistakes I made trying to put this guy together. It's probably one of the most fiddly models Games Workshop has out right now. To start, what I've done is I've set down a baking tray and I have put the instructions. So for this example of how to build a flayed one, we're going to do 12. So that's going to be this row right here. Now I put it in a baking tray because when we start cutting out these bits, I will inevitably drop one and this will uh, prevent it from falling onto the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sprue and I've got some sharp German clippers here. I'm going to find the numbers that I'm working on. In this case, I'm going to start with the first block, so B11, 13, and 12. So I found 11, 13. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flat side of my clippers here. I'm going to face the flat side toward the model, and I'm going to clip off. Now be careful with Necron models because you never know when the sprue ends and the model begins. Alright, so I've clipped off that piece. That was piece 13. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay it down on where that bit should go. And 11 is the torso, so clip those out. set that one where it's going to go and we're going to just clip them all out and set them on their designated space. At this point we have all our little bits cut out and they're laid out um, with the corresponding numbers. Now what we're going to do is we're going to clean off our bits here. So you'll notice there's little segments that were tied to the sprue. These are sprue gates, and those might still have a slight protrusion from them. So we'll just use our exacto blade and trim those down. And then something else we can do is if they're really bad, you can find where the sprue gates are on the model and take like a little file. Clean the mold lines off. <coughs> clean the mold lines off if you want to. Now, the mold lines you might not have to clean off. For these models, for the Necron flayed ones, I'd recommend cleaning off the sprue gates. Just because the tolerances when you start gluing them together are going to be so tight, especially on these fiddly little models, that it'll help the model sit together and any mold lines and sprue gates, well those will just show up in the paint job. Alright, now we're going to go clean up all these little bits and then we'll start assembly. Now all my little bits have been scraped down and filed, so now we're ready to begin assembly. So we're going to start with B11, the torso, and then the right arm. So you can see here that there's actually a little protrusion there that tells you where the arm wants to go. And you'll notice they have these handy little reference photos. So we know this is the torso, this is the right arm, 
and so that'll give us a sense of where the hand is supposed to be and there's some there Alright, now what I'm going to do is I dry fit it, make sure I know where it wants to go, and I'm going to take some of my plastic glue. Put just a touch on that. And we'll fit it into its little socket. And then while we're waiting for that to dry, let's take the other one and we'll start playing around with that. With these flayed ones and pretty much any Necron model, you're going to have to pay attention to arm positioning because it will actually fit multiple ways, which might be great for you know, changing poses, kit bashing, whatever, but if you're new and you just wanted to make it look like the box art, well then that can be an issue. That's the, why we dry fit first. And why I use plastic glue, because plastic glue will make the model tacky right away as soon as you touch the two pieces. And now I am going to do the chest plate. And the advantage of the tackiness is once the chest plate is set in, the other arms and everything will move around in case I misalign them. Alright. The chest plate has a little nub on there that fits into now this will start being a tricky part when we start doing the spine. Make sure we get that in the right spot. So I'm set that in there, do a little dry fit. Okay, that looks good. So I'm just going to run a bead down the spine and where the neck piece will rest. So we just kind of, kind of hook this in here. And let it rest down in there. Now, with a model as fiddly as this one, I would not blame you for gluing them. So as you cut these off, clean them, glue them, then cut, clean, glue. And this will give a, some time for the uh, uh, plastic glue to set. Now, since I'm not too sure about the alignment, if I got it right, I'm going to skip ahead and I'm going to do the head. And that will tell me if I've got the chest plate and the spine in there correctly. Let's check around back here. Make sure it's not moving out of alignment. I'm going to line it up with the spine sculpted into the torso. Looks like his head goes on that little bit. There. And then the shape in the back of the skull seems to match that one. So what we'll do is we'll drop it into place. Oop, that was his eye. <laughs> My bad. That's the problem with these Necron ones. Okay.
Alright, so this is supposed to tie in the side of his head, which tells me it's supposed to be canted. Oh my god, this piece is a freaking nightmare. Now I've knocked the arm out of alignment because it's fiddling around with it too much. Alright, so it looks like this is supposed to tie into the side of the mask. But there's a little indent. just seems too long to be able to do that. get my the right hand grip on this one. See, it's supposed to tie in there, but then it won't reach back to there. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to trim this down a little bit. That should help out some. I'll probably regret that later. This guy is not coming together. So sometimes tweezers are required. Let's get a little bit more glue on this. It's already dried off from me mucking about with it. as good as it's going to get there. So that head one, watch out for. Alright, so now what we're going to do Fix this arm since we got the arm out of alignment. You can see it's supposed to go back and out at a jaunty arrangement. So what I'm going to do I'm going to get some little glue to tie the chest in there. See the chest piece pins the shoulder joint back. Looking at how the little leg there fits. Okay. Not much surface area to grip it with. I'll do 
the other side. This one will be back. Now let's take some Gorilla Glue. And while this is still tacky, yeah, it's not going to want to come out. All right, plastic glue will work fine. Alright, so now we're going to start setting this down. Alright, it took a little bit to seat that down there properly. It only wants to go down if the spine is actually in perfect alignment, which I didn't have it in. But fortunately, since I used plastic glue, it got there. Alright, now let's finish off with this claw. And you can see in the photo right here how the claw is supposed to angle. So just a touch of glue. Trying to get a good look angle at this. Okay, so this is the palm bit. So I'll touch palm to palm. And I'll take my tweezers because my fingers are obviously too big for this model. And just squeeze it down into place. Make sure it's all in alignment. Alright, and that is a big claw. I don't know how I'm going to package this for travel. Alright, well, there he's been put together. And not a model for beginners. Definitely not. Well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.